And this is not about disrupting Google search. We always thought that was kind of a ridiculous argument. Really missed the point of generative AI's long-term potential. It's not about disrupting Google search. It's about changing the way digital workflows actually go about things on a day-to-day -day basis. Welcome back everyone to Chipstock Investor. Many times on our shows, we talk about that when investing in small cap businesses, small cap stocks, the best approach is to have a basket of small stock companies versus placing your bets on just one sole small company. So today we're going to talk about one of ours that is in our portfolio, Digital Ocean. And you may not think about this company as a small cap stock, but we'll discuss a little bit later why we consider this a small cap company. Nick recently had the opportunity to talk with new DigitalOcean CEO, Patty Srinivasan. So we're going to discuss some of the topics that he pointed out and his goals as the new CEO of DigitalOcean and where he plans on taking the company. So let's dive in to our discussion here on DigitalOcean. Yes, let's dive in. And if you don't know who Mr. Srinivasan is yet, this is a, have his LinkedIn profile pulled up. You can see, he has formerly served as the CEO of other cloud software startups. He's also held roles at Amazon as well as Oracle and Microsoft. This is an engineer, a software engineer at heart. And we did have the suspicion that when CEO Yancey Spruill was announced he was departing. Mr. Spruill has a financial background, served DigitalOcean well when the company went public and during the depths of the bear market. Times have changed. A lot has changed here in the last year or two. The bear market is now over. We have this new generative AI infrastructure a market chugging along at a very, very fast pace. And so we were fairly certain that what the board of directors was looking for in a new CEO was someone who could treat Digital Ocean like a small startup of sorts, given its tiny size, but big opportunity. And we think that's what they have landed here with Mr. Srinivasan. We can review what exactly Digital Ocean does which using our virtual machines infographic here that we created. And we talked about recently during our last Broadcom video. So if you haven't seen that yet, check that out. We'll have that linked in the description in here on the video. So Broadcom, of course, now owns VMware. And one of VMware's core products is these virtual machines or a hypervisor. It's a software layer that takes the servers that are in a data center and provisions them out so that multiple users running different applications can share the computing power of that machine. That is different from our personal computers uh, where the operating system runs the computer just for us personally. A hypervisor takes a single server, a very, very large piece of computing equipment and provisions that computing out to multiple people. It's the same thing that VMware does. DigitalOcean calls them droplets and it has built this very, very easy to use self-service based and very affordable virtual machine platform. A basic virtual machine that they call a droplet starts at just a few dollars a month four bucks a month. It scales up from there, depending on what you need the CPU for, what exactly you're running it on. It could be a general purpose web application or an e-commerce site. It could be something a little bit more intensive, like video streaming. They have some new storage products as well. In addition to just having the compute, you can also purchase storage products from DigitalOcean. And this is a full-blown cloud infrastructure platform that is not wholly dissimilar from VMware. It's a pretty, pretty good apples to apples comparison. Where the companies differ though, we have this slide pulled from G2, which is a website where you can compare software products and read reviews from people that work in the industry to help with your purchasing decisions. You can see DigitalOcean's droplets and then VMware's core product, vSphere, both highly ranked by users. But you can see here in the market segmentation line, DigitalOcean skews towards small businesses. Nearly all of the reviews from small businesses versus more mid-market companies are the ones using VMware and its software stack. VMware geared towards larger enterprises. DigitalOcean, again, starting at four bucks a month, very, very approachable platform, even if you're just a startup or not even just a startup, maybe someone just tinkering with a new idea 
four bucks a month, not going to set you back. This is what has helped DigitalOcean stave off big cloud infrastructure players. Your Amazon, AWSs, your Microsoft Azures, they haven't gotten steamrolled because it's cheap and it's easy to use, self-service. It's really, really simple. We ourselves have benefited from DigitalOcean's products. You don't have to be a developer to get started. Pretty simple stuff. It's fantastic. So historically, as you mentioned, Nick, DigitalOcean has been geared towards small and mid-sized businesses. And they recently acquired Paperspace back in 2023, just last year. They acquired that company for $111 million. So DigitalOcean makes this acquisition of Paperspace. How do you see that helping get the ball rolling again for DigitalOcean? Yeah, we wrote about this last summer. We made some videos about it. Paperspace essentially was a startup. Very little revenue here. What they were actually doing, we believe, was acquiring a bunch of NVIDIA AI training infrastructure on the cheap. As you probably know, there's not enough of that stuff to go around right now. It's in short supply. So there was this company, Paperspace, with all these NVIDIA H100 systems ready for AI training and AI deployment. And so DigitalOcean scooped it up. Not a bad move. Now, before we talk about Paperspace specifically, Casey, there's a couple of interesting tidbits I, I got from Mr. Srinivasan on our, our conversation. One, this might just be semantics. But I don't think it's completely semantics. He kept talking about their primary developer customers, soft, software developers, rather than up, up to this point, the last few years after DigitalOcean went public, it was always the SMB customer, your small and mid-sized business customers, including startups. So that target customer hasn't really changed. However, oftentimes these developers that become DO customers they are developers. They're small business owners or they're startup owners. And it's maybe a subtle change in messaging, but an important one. There's two reasons why Mr. Srinivasan said that he came over to DEO. He sees this as a large developer ecosystem with a very large and still fast growing opportunity. And now there's this extra, very complex computing in demand, AI. So given that DigitalOcean has this ease of use and affordability that has made it a standout among some very, very large cloud infrastructure companies. This is obviously lots of potential to build on top of that with this new AI infrastructure opportunity. And it's a durable platform. DO has obviously demonstrated that up until this point, it's remained in growth. It's become profitable in the last year, even on a gap metric. And many of those developers are thirsty, in his words, for a more easy to use and innovative platform. So paper space is that asset suddenly getting lots of attention from that developer community. Now, currently, apparently about two thirds of the revenue that paper space is generating is in fact AI training. The other third, roughly third, is deploying the AI and running the AI after it's been trained. But in the coming years, this is messaging that sort of resounds across the industry. If you ask NVIDIA or if you ask one of the larger cloud infrastructure providers, whoever, all talking about the inference market. After the AI has been trained and it gets put into use, that will become a far larger market, perhaps many orders of magnitude larger than AI training, which as we all know, has gotten quite big all on its own the last two years. So paper space has this software stack called Gradient, uh, which is an AI and machine learning operations development studio. It takes everything a developer would need from preparation of the data to training it, fine tuning the AI model, vector embeddings, everything, end to end platform. So it's not just the training. DigitalOcean thinks that with this asset, which they're going to merge with the older DigitalOcean droplet virtual machine over time. It sounds like that is one of the goals, the master plan, so to speak, is to get these two assets merged together. It will slowly transition from primarily AI training to AI inference, putting the AI to work for those small developer and small company customers. Let me see if I understand this correctly. So just very similar to how cloud, or let's use the example of Google Cloud, has really augmented our operating system. You and I both use a Windows operating system on our laptops, but 
we also use a plethora of Google Cloud products. This type of application that Paperspace is using to make these machine learning programs allows you to sort of augment and create your own operating system that works exactly how you would like it. You can feed it all of your data and then proceed to use that as your operating system. Is that kind of where we're going with this? Exactly. And I think this is why the opportunity is so large. It, again, I, I think the word that you used is correct when you say augmenting, because for better or worse, probably for worse, we're still using Windows <laughs> operating system. There's no real need to at this point, because very few of our day-to-day -day apps run on Windows. Like you said, they run in the cloud. Windows is still there in the background. Maybe we'll switch to Linux-based system at some point in the future. But the cloud, Google Cloud, has become an augmenter of, of how we operate our digital business. Yes, that is the promise of generative AI is further fine tuning digital work. And like you said, making customized apps that do exactly what you want them to do. So the cloud was fantastic. Uh, a lot of subscription software services came out of that. They were cheap, it was flexible. You could turn them off and on with a monthly subscription as you wanted to but they've kind of reached their limits. Companies have a massive amount of digital data at this point, and it would be fantastic if we could all make customized software with that mountain of data that, that each of us really is sitting on. That's the promise of generative AI longer term. And this is not about disrupting Google search. We always thought that was kind of a ridiculous argument, really missed the point of generative AI's long-term potential. It's not about disrupting Google search. It's about changing the way digital workflows actually go about things on a day-to-day -day basis. So at the beginning of the video, I mentioned that we consider DigitalOcean as one of our small cap companies in our stock portfolio. Let's talk about why we view this as a small cap. Gartner expects end-user cloud spend to reach $680 billion in 2024, which would be up 20% year over year. These numbers are the company annualized cloud revenue and quarterly year-over-year -year growth rate as of the last reported quarter in March 2024. That's right. And DigitalOcean at just $724 million on an annualized basis in its last quarter, 11% growth year-over-year. -year. This is an itty-bitty, tiny cloud infrastructure provider in a massive market, fast approaching a trillion dollars a year in global annual spend. So. The opportunity is tremendous. Now, DigitalOcean's growth rate stayed north of 20% longer than some of its peers did during the bear market. Because it caters to smaller businesses and startups, it, it kind of slowed down later and is maybe re-accelerating later as well. You can see some of these other companies, AWS has had an uptick in its Q4 2023, Google Cloud chugging along north of 20%. Even Oracle, again, used NVIDIA, to kind of level the playing field and has been catching up to some of its larger peers, 25% year over year growth. You can see it would be really nice to see DigitalOcean accelerate because of the massive opportunity it has. It's a small company. And again, that shift in messaging, not just going after small and mid-sized business customers, but just the developer community in general. They are looking to provide some new innovative products atop of their solid platform to sort of get the growth engine fired up again. Nick, I noticed you pulled a couple of charts from Main Street Data. Tell me a little bit more about what has historically been going on at DigitalOcean and what we can see going into this next year. This first chart is a chart of their largest customers, mid-sized businesses that spend more than $50 on a monthly basis. The big jump there in 2022 is when they acquired the company Cloudways, which is a, a web managed web services, managed cloud operation. So you can see the slowdown in growth. And then again, on this next slide, another slowdown, this time in growth in average revenue per user. So most of the customers, there's nearly 700,000 in total that use DigitalOcean. Most of them are individuals and startups that pay very, very little. So most of the actual revenue is made by these larger businesses that have scaled beyond startup stage. And again, as the bear market started, DigitalOcean's momentum kind of carried it through for a while, but now that slowdown is here. It may take some time for them to, again, reignite growth. So I think at the, at the end of the day, our thought process here, Casey said this is a small cap stock. 
So it's not something we're interested in babysitting. Small cap stocks are highly volatile. There's only typically very short periods of time where any given small cap stock will make a run higher. And then you may have very long periods where it does nothing. Maybe this is one of those periods for this particular small business as it tries to find its way in this new era for the cloud, in the AI era. We're happy to see what they can do, what the new management team can do to get things jump started once more. We're going to let it run. We're going to see what happens. This chart shows stock-based compensation as well as free cash flow. And over the last couple of years, the company has been using free cash flow to offset some of that stock-based compensation by repurchasing shares. With the new CEO, do you see that continuing? Well, it, it certainly sounds like the message is they still want to run the business sustainably, but they want to get back to more balance between generating a profit, a sustainable profit, not just free cash flow, but also maybe gap profitability, but also invest back in the business for growth. I don't think that Mr. Srinivasan came over to DigitalOcean so that he could execute more stock buybacks. Growth is a big priority for him. And again, this is a developer at heart looking to make great strides in this new era of technology driven by AI training. So I don't think we should throw out gap profitability and free cash flow as, you know, it's not going to happen. I don't think we should do that because I think it sounds like the message was to me anyways, we'll continue trying to run the business sustainably, profitably, but maybe to the same extent, profit margin wise over the last couple of years, maybe we should expect that to come down a bit as they do make some strategic investments. So maybe we should hit on some of our valuation notes here. Again, we're more than happy to let this one run and do its thing. So this is just sort of a back of napkin, penciled in assumptions here. First thing that is maybe a bit concerning, but this is nothing new, the cash and investments versus the, the debt. 412 million in cash and short-term investments, almost 1.5 billion in debt. That's because of those couple of acquisitions, cloudways of paper space, and then the stock buybacks. Let's just keep an eye on this for now. This is our primary concern with this business. We think they are fully capable of reaccelerating growth, but let's see what that's going to cost. But over the last trailing 12 months, free cash flow per share was $1.13. If we do a reverse discount cash flow on this to try to see what the market is expecting at the current stock price of roughly $40, just shy of $40 on morning of March 28th, we think the market is expecting something like 10% free cash flow per share growth for about five years. And then maybe a six to seven percent terminal growth rate thereafter, which is slightly above the IT sector overall growth rate of about five percent. We use the ten percent discount rate that gets us to about forty bucks per share. Now from there, I, I think we can all decide is that a reasonable expectation or not. I think for us, it's reasonable enough for a small cap position, a, a small business that we're happy to kind of let it do its thing for a while. All right, there's our take on DigitalOcean. It's one that we're going to hold for now. We'll make sure we keep you updated on any changes we make with this company. We still promised a video on pure storage and that will be coming out very soon. Make sure if you have not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button. We really appreciate it. And of course, as always, you can check out our links below for our Discord access and our show notes over on our Kofi page. We'll see you again very soon at Chipstock Investor.